What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to yet another two minute Thursday. Miss Tuesday, that was embargo day. We're making Tuesday Thursday, and I'm gonna try and do it in two minutes. And even saying that to you right now, I realize that this intro, I've already burned 30 seconds of the two minutes, so I will start the timer on the clock when I feel it is appropriate to do so, and then from that point, we will begin the actual two minute Thursday. That intro. Not bad, right? We made that entirely with Artless, which this video is sponsored by. More from them in a minute. But today we're talking about how to fake the 35 millimeter film look. Because let's be honest, I'm into film right now. In case you didn't know, I tell you every single week. How do you know Pete's into film? He'll tell you. But the look itself of, of getting a vintage photo or 35 millimeter film, that is very popular. It's why the Fuji X100V is very popular. It's why tons of presets exist to make photos look vintage and look like film. This is Shameless plug here, I've got my V5 preset pack coming out very, very soon. All right, let's put two minutes on the clock and completely disregard it, but I will try, I promise. Here is a photo that we took, Chris Howe took this photo, in a field where we were shooting a project that you've yet to see next month. Very vintage, very film looking. Now it's not, it was shot with a digital camera, which is always interesting when you come back and drop the grain down to see how much sharper it is, but I'm adding like 50% grain. So that's one, obviously making it very filmic looking. I find a few things to do to make something look like it's shot with film or vintage, or it just has more feel, more soul to it. Less contrast, absolutely less, no clarity at all. Uh, the colors, depending on what the, what the subject is or what time of day it is, either pop or don't as much. Adding grain, but the size of grain and the roughness of the grain, those things all matter. Just adding grain without size or roughness sometimes isn't enough. So I'd like 50% all of them. I've been doing that on my iPhone shots with Lightroom and just grain, grain for days. But one thing that I realized that helps immensely to make a photo look like 35 millimeter film is adding that sort of washed out nature that some of those photos have. And to do that, you use a linear mask. Come over here to where you would select a mask, hit linear gradient and draw a gradient all the way down. Now, if I was to do any sort of edit, like if I was to bring up exposure, bring down exposure, it's going to affect that entire masked area, me included, and the truck, but I don't want to do that. So let's start that again. If I was to bring down a gradient this time, but you choose, click on your mask there, subtract subject. See what that does now is it puts the gradient behind me and it doesn't just stop at people. You can click on that mask again, hit subtract, go to objects, and it will also cut the truck out. All right, now before we get into the magic of what makes this image look like it was shot with film, I need to thank our sponsors of today's video, Artlist. Now the intro, if you watched it, you'll notice I didn't shoot any of that footage. We used all of that footage from Artlist. So obviously you've got your stock footage. Now footage aside, you might've heard the sounds, nature, fully, the sounds of the environment that you are currently looking at. Typically you'd have to go through a website and find all those individual sounds yourself. What does a field sound like? What this new AI tool is doing that Artlist has made is when you find a clip that you wanna use, that AI automatically goes through the database and finds sounds that would work in that scenario. That's amazing. Obviously you can still search and go deeper and deeper. In two years from now, we will just snap our fingers and a video will be made. So that's just one of many features that Artlist has. Obviously we get all of our music from Artlist, stock footage from Artlist. It is a great investment if you're a creator and you're making things online. Different licenses, you never have to worry about getting any type of flag, copyright claim, free to use it for whatever you want based on the subscription that you choose. Just a really high quality service with high quality music that is very easy to find and pair with your creations. So if you wanna check it out for yourself and get two months free off your annual subscription, you can hit the link in the description below and check out Artlist for your needs. So thanks again to Artlist for sponsoring this video. 
in making my intro. So now all the edits that we do on this gradient will not affect the truck or the subject. And the reason I'm doing this is because I only want to affect the background. I want to add a bit of a haze to the background. So to do that with our mask selected, I'm going to come down to dehaze. Now, typically you're going to use dehaze to get rid of haze. Sometimes it adds a contrast. It cuts through that haze layer, but I want to add haze. So literally just slide it the other way. And you don't want to go too hard because then the trees look like they've got ashes on them or something, but start halfway maybe go negative 35%. But that little look, that little trick that adds the haze to the background, brightens the tips of the trees. And now if we preview that on and off, that's what it's done. It's just softened it up. If you wanna bring that mask down even further, you can just drag, literally just drag the square because it's not gonna affect your subject. Again, that washed out kind of glow look, to me that just makes all the difference. It's that easy. And time. Did I make it? That'll be available at petermckinnon.com. Here I said that, petermckinnon.com. It's very Frono's photo. Frono's photo.com. I should go to Philly and just ride bicycles with him. How sick is this hat, by the way? My friends at Coup de Tete made this for me. It's my new little, uh, my new little summer banger.